Now, science has its own version of reality, eh? The scientific method, damn it, which is rooted, at least to a large degree, in materialism. Scientists, scientists say, well, 97, I'm not going to argue with the tribe. 97% of the tribe believe that science is the main arbitrator of ultimate truth and reality. Because science, damn it, proves itself constantly. And it never fucks up, except occasionally. Do you all remember, I remember Mount St. Helen, that was 22 years ago, but even New Yorkers remember that. Hey, the whole friggin' mountain made a left. Remember that? <laughs> that mountain detonated with the explosive force of five nuclear warheads. Two weeks before that mountain blew up, devastating the area, they asked a group of scientists in the area about the status of the volcano. The scientists said, we're pretty sure it's cool. We got mini seismographs all around it. We got laser beams shining from satellites onto fixed mirrors that detect the slightest motion of liquid magma. That mountain's cool. Then they went to a 92-year-old dairy farmer named Zeke in the area. That's about the mountain farmer went, that son of a bitch gonna blow up. <laughs> See the way the cows are trying to get in the station wagon? <laughs> You want to know if a volcano's gonna go? To hell with the scientists. Watch large creatures who tits drag in the grass. <laughs> you know that's true? When I was in California, true, I met the Japanese expert on earthquakes, worldwide best guy on earthquakes, because I was a little concerned, you know? I say, hey doc, how can you tell when a large quake's coming? I thought he was gonna mention something about compression of airways, electromagnetic anomalies. Instead he says, watch dogs that lay that weigh less than 25 pounds. Like a dachshund. Take a look at a dachshund. Look how low his nuts are. He can hurt himself on a peach pit. <laughs> when there's an earthquake coming, they know. I got this buzzing thing in my balls and ass. It could be a quake, it could be a truck, who knows? Let's stand in the doorway and pray. <laughs> Scientists were challenged on reality by the church. Because the main contention for the existence of, and by the way, I want you to understand something. Don't reach rabbit erroneous conclusions about me. I'm not an atheist. I believe in God. I don't use the G word, because I went to Catholic school. Uh, to me, the G word, God, is a big guy with a beard who has thousands of angels watching me jerk off no matter how sneaky I am. <laughs> 781, huh, Chris? <laughs> Must be a rainy weekend, huh, boy? Uh, I believe in a version of God. And the reason, you see, the, the, the hardcore atheistic scientists, who I think are totally off the wall, too, they say, well, you know, why, not, why do you need a God? Why do you need a big king type God thing? And the obvious answer is, well, creation. Somebody had to make it. Look at this, billions of galaxies, stars, gas plays, planets, people, people in Jersey, people everywhere. <laughs> Somebody had to make all this shit. And of course, the Catholic Church and the Christians believe, and that lady, that lady from Arizona with the tiny brain, she believes that a giant king-like man created everything as it is. Fuck evolution, as it is. Even your shoes, all at once. <laughs> He did it in a big creation shop. <laughs> Working there. Fucking six days he worked. Seven days he was whacked out. Six days building shit and shit's hard to make. Think about a snail. That's a bitch. <laughs> oh yeah, you French guys can get him out with a little fork. You ever try getting one back in the fucking shell? <laughs> How about jellyfish? God says up all night making a goddamn jellyfish. It's like trying to build a log cabin out of snot. <laughs> so because of the obvious and apparentness of everything that is, the creator seemed necessary. But then science comes along and says, no, no, I'm afraid you have it long, primitive fucking people. <laughs> Look at all we've given you. Electric lights, radio, flake of douche. If you want your crotch to smell like a drum of Schmucker's Jam, we've got it. <laughs> Why you want that, I don't know. Perhaps in your personal reality, you live on a slice of toast. 
But whatever you want, we deliver to you, and we're hardly ever wrong, and we're telling you we actually have an answer for creation. It wasn't a big man in a shop, laboring away, building all the things we love. Clouds, <laughs> stars, pussy. Oh, let's see, look at that. Two little rose petals and some baby oyster. Pussy. I like this thing, but I think it's going to be trouble down the line. <laughs> They didn't think of a God in a creation shop. They said it all came from the Big Bang. Now here's the Big Bang. The Big Bang says that all matter and energy, in fact, space-time itself, everything, trillions and quadrillions of stars, billions and billions of planets, gas clouds, galaxies, Jersey, Yonkers, <laughs> all the people in China, all the people inventing new chicken dishes in China. <laughs> All the buses, all the trains, all the elephants, all the big piles of elephant shit, everything in the whole universe was squished together into a tiny, itty bitty thing. So small, they gave it a special name, a singularity. You want to know how big a singularity is? Picture a mosquito's dick during a blizzard. <laughs> Divide by a hundred million. That's still way too big. You take all that stuff and squish it into something as small as a singularity, you don't need a god, it will explode. <laughs> and according to the scientists, it did. Big bang, bam, ba 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 fucking ba ba boom. <laughs> problem, here's the problem. Did you ever see an explosion? It's random, shit flies everywhere. Except that all the gas clouds, all of the, the pre-star galactic clouds, all of that stuff, all the matter, even the energy, flung out, but it didn't fling out in a random manner. If it did, to the force of gravity, over time, it would have squinched back together into a giant booger of nothingness. <laughs> Instead, it was perfectly balanced, like the most magnificent poem or piece of music, so that stars could form. Regular stars our sun size, planets, Living creatures, carbon-based, us, people everywhere, Shriners, everyone. <laughs> now, some scientists say, well, that was just a random accident. A British physicist who was so smart he wor worked with Hawkins was asked, what are the odds of a random, enormous explosion causing a perfect balance in, in gravity so that we had the universe we know that enabled our life and our consciousness to form? And he figured it out. You ready for this? 10 with 51 zeros to 1. That's a million, trillion, billion, fucking quadrillion, quadrillion, fucking trillion, billion, zillion, quadrillion, fucking bazillion to 1. The same odds of you winning the lotto 11 years in a row every day. <laughs> Tripping over a beer can and seeing Bigfoot fucking Elvis in a UFO on one day. In other words, an incredible long shot.